Hey friends, today we're looking at rootless containers and why rootless? Well, for one thing, they are more secure, but I won't bother you with the details. You can chat GPT that on your own. But if you're studying for the RHCSA exam, I'm gonna cover everything that you need to know for the exam, so stay tuned. But if you're looking to get into DevOps, you wanna run a home lab, knowing how to run rootless containers is super helpful, so let's just jump in. I'm connected to a fresh install of a Red Hat server, and on those, Podman is installed by default, but it's not active or enabled by default, so let's start by systemctl enable now. Now, Podman, and now it's running. Let's do systemctl status Podman. And uh, enable active, everything is looking hunky dory. Uh, and if you're on Fedora, it's just enough install Podman, of course. Another thing that I recommend that you, you all install is DNF group install container management. And now let's create a user, user add stranger things and let's do password stranger things this is a really important point for us to remember so don't forget later on we're gonna have to run systemctl hyphen hyphen user commands to set up the rootless container if you do that via su stranger things or if you do it sudo stranger things that's not going to work you're always going to have to log in via the console or ssh so let's do that let's ssh into the server as stranger things now we can execute systemctl hyphen hyphen user commands so remember that and now we're ready to run our first container it's going to be an nginx container it's going to have persistent storage the biggest issue I think with rootless containers is that they cannot run on a privileged port, but we're gonna fix that later. Right now we're gonna set up everything that we need so we're not gonna run into SE Linux issues and then also set up the persistent storage. Let's pull down the latest Nginx image. And now we have that image. We're gonna issue the podman inspect command to inspect the Nginx image. And why are we doing that? Well, let's do grep user ID so I can see it in red. Uh, there it is, user ID 101. We're gonna create a local directory that's going to host all the HTML files, whatever the Nginx container is going to use, and it's going to run on that user ID. So we have to do podman, let's create it first, and I'm a computer, Nginx data, da da. And let's do podman unshare uh, chone, chone 101 101. Oh, let's do do it recursively as well for future things that are going to go in there. And voila, that's that one necessary step done. One huge step for us, one small step for mankind. We're gonna have to present something to the world. Hello world. Let's do vim nginx index.html and we cannot do that we are going to run into permissions issues and why is that well because we gave the nginx user within the container by using the unshare command it has read write execute and you can see the nginx group has read and execute and others that would you include you and me has read and execute so we cannot write so we have to whip out the big guns and sudo vim nginx index.html and let's just paste this in something that's uh neat and nice pristine and now we have that we have something to present the world what's the next step the next step is to make sure that we do not run into any SE Linux issues with subdirectories or files. So let's make sure that we get that done because we are running SE Linux as you should in enforcing mode. Um, so let's do SE manage, uh, SE manage context minus L uh, for everything. Let's grab anything that has to do with HTTP and we have to sudo that uh, so we want a basic content type for HTTP. If you look at the lower one, you can see exec, that's for scripts and stuff like that. So we do not need that. We need this one. Uh, copy. 
and uh, now let's do SC manage. Of course, we need to do for that as well. SC manage uh, FC context add type and this type, and then we need the directory home stranger things and engine x data was it yes i think i do believe kind of and uh let's do some fancy regular expression type stuff and voila that's it let's relabel that and let me see relabeled unconfined user home t to http system content t winning and now let's fire this abandon boy up pod man run hyphen d detach the mode name web p for ports so 9000 on the host machine or in the server is mapped to port 80 80 inside the container uh, hyphen v for the storage portion of this game stranger things nginx data colon and then what's mapped to with inside the container user share and share nginx uh what was it html colon zz it's going to take care of all the se linux permissions for us and let's run an nginx container <gasps> Ooh, sorry if that was loud i'm just so excited and i cannot hide it um so that bad boy has been running for six seconds so let's do uh, let's do curl local host port 9000 <gasps> there you have it amazing if you're having any issues a good thing to do is always check the listening ports listening on port 9000 on all addresses. So that is a neat. Let's copy my IP address right here. Let's run an incognito window. And let's look at port 9000 cannot be reached. Oh, the dilemma. Mm. Let's do sudo firewall CMD add port uh, 9000. And then TCP, let's do that permanent. Uh, yes, you can have my password, of course, kind of. Yeah. And so let's do sudo firewall cmd reload. And let's go over here and do a reload. Oh, the container is up and running. We are ready to jump into the system D portion of events. Let's do a Mikader P. It's under config, config systemd user. And if that works out, we can cd over to that directory, systemd user. And voila, we are there. Podman generates systemd and then the name of the container that we want to generate a systemd file for. And then we do files because if you don't do hyphen hyphen files, it's just gonna write the information on the screen and then hyphen hyphen new it makes it so the system d handles generating the container doing cleanup so that's super nice we want that as well so now we have the container web service file and the next step for us is if we want to do system ctl hyphen hyphen user and then enable this container service we have to enable linger so we do login ctl show user stranger things and you can see here at the bottom linger no login ctl and label linger stranger things yes please and now we can see that linger is a noblet now we're ready to do system ctl hyphen hyphen user remember you can only do that via the console or ssh and let's do daemon reload to reload all our files. And let's now do systemctl enable, oh, user enable, and uh, what was the container? Container web service. And let's also do start. And now let's do status. Active running podman ps should be running for nine nine seconds see what the new thing generate like hyphen hyphen new that i told you about it generated a new container 
And so what we can do now is actually reboot the server and verify that everything is up and running. But first, uh, let's do IPA, copy this, the bad boy, incognito, and let's do port 9000. Now it's up and running. Fine, fine, fine. Let's now do a sudo systemctl reboot password. And now it is gone. Let's just do a refresh. It's refreshing, refreshing. Cannot be reached and bam. See how quick that was? Pretty impressive. We have successfully created our first rootless container. Uh, that is good job us, uh, way to go. We are amazing. Uh, as you can see, the, the container is running on TCP port 9000. Let's say you want it to answer on port 80 on the host. So let's get that going. Enable Nginx, enable now Nginx. And let's check if it's running. Always a good thing, always a good thing. Everything's running hunky-dory. And now we just have to etc nginx conf and let's do web conf and let's uh, paste this in. All of this is going to be in the blog that's in the links. The link is in the description down below. So um, if you want to follow along, but uh, basically what it's doing, it's listening port 80. It's uh, this is the server name because I'm not using DNS for this. Of course, it's going to proxy pass. Uh, to port 9000 so and you can read about all these headers etc later if you want to I'm just trying to keep this as short and neat as possible so let's do nginx minus s reload and now that is reloaded next step is to take care of some firewall rules and let's list what's happening port tcp 9000 is open we do not need that anymore because we're going to be accepting traffic on port 80 and then proxy passing that to port 9000 tcp so let's do firewall cmd uh, remove port 9000 tcp make that permanent yes please we're also going to add service http and we're going to make that permanent uh, I think that's all that we need. Let's do firewall CMD reload. And then also let's do list all again. Now we're accepting HTTP traffic. Uh, the the 9000 is gone. And now let's verify that's working. Let's get our IP address again. Cape pasta, open a window. See what's going on here, bad gateway. So. That's good, that's good, that's good. Let's troubleshoot together. Journal CTL, let's look at the logs. Oh, there we have an SE Linux issue. Let's make the test text a bit smaller for you. Well, we have to enable HTTP network relay. Uh, so let's do that. Do tell us what to do. People say SE Linux is hard, it's not hard. It's just a pain in the ass sometimes. So let's do that. Now let's do something. Refresh. Our final test is to restart the server since we have everything configured. And remember, if you're taking the RHCSA certification, reboot the server after you configured the containers. You have to test it out, you have to verify, but uh, let's do that, sudo systemctl reboot. Let's open the browser and see what's happening. Should time out, cannot be reached. Oh, I was using the wrong port, that makes sense. See, it's already up again. Let's SSH back into and verify podman ps see it's running sweet sauce that's all she wrote i hope you enjoyed this rootless container configuration how to by the linux ninja until next time catch you later